Give me these final thoughts, episode 19, When I'm 80, part 2. Joe Bastios here. An 80-year-old woman called at Jaleel Laporte's Tech Guy radio program and asked him for the best ways for her to digitize her collection of VHS tapes she'd been saving over the years. He asked if these were irreplaceable copies of shows or family videos, and she said no, just programs that she liked and wanted to continue to watch. He suggested that she might find her shows already available on Netflix. Actually, it's not even the cost, but the hassle and time needed to rip VHS tapes to some digital format. Basically, digitizing VHS tapes without commercial equipment means playing the tapes in real time while the computer captures and digitizes the video feed. Thus, a single 40-minute tape would probably take over an hour to convert. The woman made it sound like she wanted to digitize dozens if not tens of dozens of shows. Laporte didn't say this quite so bluntly, but given her age and how long it takes take to digitize the shows, there's a real good chance that she won't live long enough to enjoy watching them after they're all digitized. But she didn't seem to understand what he was talking about and continued to act like she had all the time in the world to someday enjoy watching her programs. Many of us have things that we want to do that we say are important to us but never get around to do them. I have two models, an Apollo capsule with service module and Apollo LEM lunar excursion model that I purchased 20 years ago but haven't managed to build or even take out of the box. I love the space program. I have collections of news articles and special issue magazines that I've been gathering since I was a kid. I have NASA posters on my walls. But in the last 20 years, I haven't had the time to sit down and glue these little gray plastic pieces together. There have always been too many other things to do, such that models seem to be on the permanent later list. I'm just like the 80-year-old in her dream of digitizing her TV shows that she'll eventually watch someday. Even in my current unemployed state, I'm finding it difficult to balance the must-do with the want-to-do in my life. I've read Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People several times, and the one takeaway that spoke to me, which was especially true when I was doing tech troubleshooting while teaching, was that there will always be more problems than there are hours in the day. Thus, one needs to triage the problems. Covey divides the tasks into four quadrants as follows. Quadrant 1 are things that are important and urgent. Quadrant 2 are things that are important but not urgent. Quadrant 3 are activities that are not important but urgent. Quadrant 4 are activities that are not important and not urgent. Quadrant 1 problems are the drop everything problems. Quadrant 2 problems are more long term but high on the to-do list. Quadrant 3 would be as soon as you're done with what you're doing, help And quadrant four are filler whenever problems. Just recognizing that not all problems are, oh my God, drop everything kinds of problems was a great revelation to me. I once sat in on a presentation by Stedman Graham and my takeaway from this was that if something is important to you, it's on your calendar on a regular basis. Instead of approaching the things we care about as someday, we need to be able to point to it and do it. His example, being the busy entrepreneur and speaker, was that if he didn't put golf on his calendar, then it wasn't going to happen. So the question is, what stuff in my life is important enough to have a space on my calendar versus the someday kind of stuff? Right now, urgent and important is getting a job. Important but not urgent would be time with Maggie in writing. I'd probably also put all of my creative endeavors like playing music, my photography, videos and blogging, in the important but not urgent category. Urgent but not important would be the bills and the daily grind kind of stuff. I generally don't have time for anything that one would consider to be filler in my life. Even doing email crosses into the urgent but not important daily grind kind of thing. This past week I've been doing a lot of scanning of old documents and journals that might seem to be of a quadrant four not urgent not important kind of thing. But in the process, it's been generating a lot of energy about my writing projects, specifically the long-term projects. So it seems to be more not urgent, but important more than anything else. The funniest thing was that as I was writing this post, I had the most difficult time prioritizing anything and ended up in email scanning land for a couple days. 
I don't like lists and am not fond of feeling like I'm a slave to the plan. But as a classroom teacher, I knew that one planned for change, that nothing got done without a well-defined plan, and that a good plan enabled one to change directions when a better opportunity presented itself. The plan wasn't the end all, but it was the means to get to the end. I guess now that my life has become a huge blank slate, I have to fill in the squares myself, including all the things that I've said are important to me, and not let my days fly by stuck in email filler land. Thank you for spending this time with me at JBB's Final Thoughts. Please check out my website at joebustillos.com. That's J-O-E-B-U-S-T-I-L-L-O-S.com for more of my musings and thoughts. Catch you later. Bye-bye.